Joining us now to discuss this is Washington Post former Jerusalem, Jerusalem Bureau Chief Janine Zakaria. She joins us from Stanford University where she is a visiting scholar. Janine, as always, welcome into the war room. Thanks, Michael. Uh, Secretary of State John Kerry postponed his trip to the Middle East to join in the join the president and his National Security Council. Is this a sign that President Obama will make a decision about U.S. involvement sometime soon? Well, I think you identified the timing correctly in the intro that uh, the administration was watching, that the Syrian rebels uh, lost control of the stronghold called al Qusair in Syria, and that was worrisome for them that Assad is now moving on to other strongholds and that he could be defeating the rebels militarily before the administration even makes a decision on arming them. So I think he sees time as of the essence for that reason. But more importantly also, the president is slated to go to the G8 next week in Northern Ireland where he's going to meet with Russian leader Vladimir Putin. And I think probably what he wanted to do was make sure that they could formulate some sort of art articulate some policy, which I think has been lacking to some extent, on Syria so that he can go to the G8 and hold hopefully win some sort of agreement with Vladimir Putin because there's been too much tension there and that's a major problem in resolving this crisis. Yeah, and that's been, been a hallmark of the difficulties from the very beginning at the National Security Council when, when, when Russia was voting against intervention there. Uh, so let's, let's go over the options that I outlined the, the, that the administration mm -hmm. is considering, which are providing arms to the rebels or installing a no-fly zone. Which is the better option for the United States? Well, I think what they're looking at actually is those two in tandem. You're right. They may select one of them. Those are the quote unquote military options. Like you mentioned, there's no option here of U.S. troops. Uh, the White House has said that quite clearly. The third, the other option is a diplomatic option. And, you know, Secretary Kerry has been working very hard to try and convene a, a second peace conference of sorts in Geneva that would bring all the parties to, ta to the table because. Frankly, right now, Washington is completely divided. President Obama is getting two completely separate, different sets of advice. One is work towards a diplomatic solution. Do not get intervene here military. You're only going to escalate. You think 95,000 dead is bad. It's going to get worse. Or this is crazy. There are 95,000 dead. We're risking a major regional war. Um, and we need to do something. So he's really, that's why he's been reluctant to make a choice, because the choices are so difficult. And who would be at this peace conference? Because, of course, that would be the one that would make, you know, certainly me happy, but the, the, would make the most people happy because it would uh, involve non-military uh, solutions. Who would be at a peace conference like that? Aside from you would have the Assad, the government there, and, and the rebels. Would other countries go to that conference as well? Yeah, I mean, the dream would be to win some agreement among the major powers in the area, which are Russia, Turkey, um, the West, the U.S., and then you would have representatives of the regime, I guess, if they can make a decision about whether Assad has to go. Remember, the president said that Assad has to go. So there's the, the international community, the West, doesn't even have an agreement on that key point. The main player that there, that really needs to be there, which I don't think um, the West, the United States and its allies can agree on, is Iran. Because really what you're seeing, Michael, in Syria right now is a kind of proxy war going on between the United States, the West, and the West together versus Iran, which is backing Syria and now Hezbollah. So there, and I think there's a reluctance to have Iran be involved there, but without them, I don't see how this gets resolved either. Yeah, that, and that's what on seems... Diplomatically. It, uh, diplomatically, yeah, that, and that and that yeah. is obviously a, a big problem there. Um, the civil war has been going on for two years. Why now? Why are they? Why are they deciding now? What has there been a breaking point that the U.S. is deciding, you know, is to step in now in some way, shape, or form? Well, as I mentioned, this uh, this this victory in Al Qusair, which was a, a rebel stronghold, and they're watching Assad uh, get ready to take even more. Um, stronger military action in some of the other rebel strongholds. Um, the death count, the use of the chemical weapons confirmed, uh, yeah. the G8 coming up. So all this is leading to a decision so it all, point. It's all that, the, the, what you mentioned. I mm -hmm. guess that, that that's the, the real timing here. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to switch to Turkey. Earlier today, riot police moved into Taksim Square while Prime Minister uh, Erdogan continues to dismiss the unrest. If he doesn't start taking the protesters seriously, could this turn into another civil war in that area? I'm not sure. Um, I watched the video today. I could not believe it. I mean, anybody who's been to, Ta and I've been to Taksim Square and Tahrir Square, reported from both of them, and Taksim yeah. Square is, you know, the Intercontinental Hotel is in the background. I mean, it's really not the place you expect to see these kinds of demonstrations. 
Erdogan is still very popular among the masses, but there has been this contingent for the last few years that have been very upset with his increasingly authoritarian rule, his religious turn, and, and there's a business component here where he supports business interests that are more religious and things, and people just got fed up. I don't think that the military, the Turkish military, is extremely strong, is going to let it go in that direction, but, you know, nobody thought Hosni Mubarak, the strong man of Egypt for 30 years, was going to go either, so I hate to predict, but I, right. I believe that this is not going to go in that direction. Yeah, and there, there is a difference, uh, and this is something you know better than I, Janine, but the, the, a difference between uh, Istanbul and the rest of Turkey then. So, I mean, it, what you're seeing in Istanbul is not necessarily reflective right. of the rest of the country. Isn't that right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Istanbul is sort of a secular, more cosmopolitan metropolis. Um, it's also a democracy, Turkey, um, although we really have seen Erdogan jailing um, dissidents, becoming more authoritarian, and, and, and it was quite striking, I think, for people that he turned the water cannons and the tear gas on the protesters. So uh, yeah. we'll have to see, but I think that's separate from what's going on on the border with Syria. Of course, with, with the with the, the uh, refugees coming in. Uh, let's go back to the mm -hmm. president. He just added Susan Rice and Samantha Powers to his foreign policy team. Yeah, Susan Rice worked under the Clinton administration during the Rwandan genocides. Years later, this is what she said. She said, I swore to myself that if I ever faced such a crisis again, I would come down on the side of dramatic action, going down in flames if that was required. How will the Rice Powers uh, addition to the administration change U.S. involvement in your estimation? Look, Susan Rice has still been a major uh, advisor to the president until now over the past two years as U.S. ambassador to the United Nations, and they have yet to take any demonstrable clear action in Syria. So I'm not sure that her moving to the White House is going to change that. Samantha Power is a human rights act, you know, strong on, gen I mean, she's an expert on genocide. We've got 95,000 dead. So clearly there are going to be key voices there. But I think the president is hearing other voices as well that are really urging caution. And he's worked so hard to pull the United States out of Iraq and Afghanistan. And those situations are really, really unstable, very deadly, that I just don't think he's has an appetite for deep engagement in, in Syria. I mean, I think if we see anything, it's going to be something not over what, what did she say, go down in flames? I mean, I don't think yeah. that's the approach he's going to take. So, but we'll have to wait and see. Well, everyone in our audience now understands this a whole lot better because you stopped by, Janine Zakaria. Thanks so much for, uh, for coming into the war room, as always. Up next on the show, imaginary solitary, uh, imagine, imaginary solitary.